In 1861, there were 34 United States of America. Eleven of these states acted to secede or withdraw from the Union and form the Confederate States of America. At the heart of the issue was slavery. Slavery was not unique to the U.S., but became active in America in 1699, beginning in the colony of Jamestown, when African laborers were brought to work in the tobacco fields. In 1793, the invention of the cotton gin greatly increased the demand for cotton, and the demand for cheap or free labor grew as well. The issue of slavery became more intense when many opponents sought to abolish slavery and make it illegal. The northern states moved in this direction. But the southern states would not and did not. The cotton plantations of the south relied on slave labor. With the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860, a Republican and strong opponent of slavery, these 11 southern states moved to secede from the Union and wage war against the North. It began at Fort Sumter in the coastal town of Charleston, South Carolina. Confederate troops fired upon the fort. These were the shots that began the American Civil War. The main thrust of the Civil War was this. States that relied on slavery for its industry and to keep slavery legal wanted to secede from the Union of the United States and self-govern. Leaders and congressional representatives of the northern United States, where slavery was illegal, wanted to maintain national integrity and prevent the secession of the southern states. The Civil War was the bloodiest and deadliest war on American soil. It divided families and friends. In the book titled The American Civil War by John Keegan, he declared that the American Civil War was to prove one of the most ferocious wars ever fought, without geographic objectives. The only target for each side was the enemy soldier. As President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln was Commander-in-Chief of the Union, the North, and his major military leaders, Ulysses S. Grant and William T. Sherman. The President of the Confederacy to the South was Jefferson Davis, with his major leaders, Robert E. Lee, Pierre Gustave Taunt Beauregard, and Stonewall Jackson. These southern leaders and their troops sought to ensure the secession of the southern states from the Union. Battles between the North and South were fierce. Loss of life and injury from cannon fire and musket balls were massive. Surgery and amputations were conducted in the field without the aid of anesthesia, without the use of antiseptics. The result of these horrific battles a total of 650,000 lives lost, hundreds of thousands injured, and every one an American. Among the hundreds of battles fought, some of the major conflicts occurred with Grant and Lee at Appomattox, the Battle of Bull Run, Shiloh in Tennessee, the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, and the horrible Battle of Antietam near Sharpsburg, Maryland. Victories were scored by both Union and Confederate armies as opposing generals attempted to outsmart and outmaneuver each other with the ultimate goal, to force the enemy into ultimate and complete surrender. On January 1, 1863, Abraham Lincoln, through an executive order, issued the Emancipation Proclamation which ordered the freedom and liberty of nearly four million held slaves. Although not immediately recognized by the rebellious southern states, the Declaration allowed for a slave to become free through escaping servitude by any means, or if the advancing serving army allowed a slave to run free. On November 19, 1863, at the dedication of the Soldiers' National Cemetery, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, 
also the site of a major battle victory by the Union Army, President Lincoln delivered his Gettysburg Address, one of the shortest yet most eloquent and powerful oratories spoken by any U.S. President. One of the final battles of the Civil War occurred on the morning of April 9, 1865. General Ulysses S. Grant, who would one day become president, soundly defeated Confederate General Robert E. Lee and accepted his surrender at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. Six days after the crushing defeat of the Confederation of the Southern States, on April 15, 1865, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States of America, would be assassinated by John Wilkes Booth while attending Fort's Theater. It would take time and effort, and eventually the time came when President Andrew Johnson signed on August 20, 1866, the proclamation declaring that peace, order, tranquility, and the civil authority now exists in and throughout the whole of the United States of America. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers. 